Let's take a look at a couple more examples. Now we have a circuit that has two current sources in it and we will apply the rules to do a superposition theorem uh, analysis on this circuit to find the inductor current. Assume that the current sources are ideal. So we've got a uh, inductor, we've got a capacitor, both of them are in their uh, non-reactive values and we have two uh, ideal sources here 100 and 30 uh, at 0 and 90 degrees. So the first thing we're going to find the current through the inductor due to the current source number one. We're going to replace source number two with an open. Okay, so the rules tell us for current sources open the source. We don't short these uh, with an open. As you can see the entire 100 milliamp then from the current source I1 goes through the inductor, nothing through the capacitor. Find the current through the inductor due to the current source 2 now by replacing the current source 1 with an open as indicated in the drawing. Notice that all of the 30 milliamp of current goes through the source through the inductor. Okay, So step 3 to get the total inductor current, superimpose the two individual currents and add the phasors. So we have two values given to us as, um, as polar. So the current through inductor 1, the current through inductor 2 is the current of each of the sources. So 100 at 0 degrees in milliamps plus 30 at 90 degrees in milliamps. So what do we do? Well, we can't just combine these together, so um, we have to convert them to a, uh, uh, to, a, to a rectangular. So by making them rectangular, since we have 100 with no angle, this simply becomes 100 milliamps. Here, since we have 90 degrees, remember 90 degrees is telling us that we just simply substitute the J. So it becomes J 30 milliamps. So now we can take those two values, run them through the polar conversion, rectangular to polar conversion, and we end up with 104 at an angle of 16.7 milliamps. Okay. So this one, pretty simple uh, with these two currents, ideal current sources. In the next one, we need to find the total current then in the load resistor and assume the sources are real. So we've got two resistors here. We've got our load resistor, 2K ohms. We've got resistor 1 then in the circuit in series with the capacitor. We've got a source over here that's a DC source of 15 volts. And we have a source over here, number one, that's an AC source, five at zero degrees in an RMS value, and it has a frequency of one K hertz. So to find the current then through the load, due to the AC source, VS1 then is zero, replaced by its internal impedance, and the DC source as shown. So looking from voltage source 1, then we've zeroed out voltage source 2. Okay, so that source is in, in essence a just a path to ground for the resistor R1. We have total impedance then is equal to the capacitive reactance plus the sum of R1, RL, or the product over the sum of R1, RL. So X sub C then becomes 723 ohms. The total impedance 723 ohms at an angle then of minus 90 degrees added to the product over the sum. Again, you're going to go treat this um, as a quotient so we can combine our terms multiplication in the numerator and divide by the denominator. This gives us then our terms, once we do our polar to rectangular conversions of minus J723 ohms plus 607 ohms, 
in polar form once we convert that becomes 984 at an angle of minus 47.3 ohms. Next we use the current divider. The current in the load R sub L due to the source Vs1. So the current through RL source 1 is the current divider. So we have 1k ohm divided by 3k ohms times 5.08 at an angle of 47.3 degree milliamps. Okay, so that's our product then of those two terms. We end up then with 1.69 at an angle of 47.3 degrees milliamps. So there's our schematic diagram for that operation. Step two then, we're going to find the current in the load due to the voltage source, the DC voltage source. So we turn the voltage source back on, we turn, put it in back in the circuit. Now we're going to zero out or short out voltage source one, replacing it with its internal impedance as shown. The impedance magnitude then of voltage source two is, so we've got impedance is equal to R1 plus R2, because it's just a series circuit, 3K ohms. The current then produced by source 2 is V source 2 divided by the total impedance gives us 5 milliamps DC current. Step 3 then by superposition then we can see that the total current in the load resistor RL is 1.69 at an angle of 47.3 degrees milliamps riding on top of a DC level of 5 milliamps. So we can see here we've got our current in the inductor. We've got a angle here of 47.3 degrees leading and the whole signal, the reference is riding right on top of that 5 milliamps.